We're staying in New Brunswick now to chat to an environmental organization about the work they are doing globally and a contest they are running to get us thinking about reducing our overall carbon footprint. We're hosting a competition, it's called Can a Building Clear the Air? And it's for a tiny shelter that uh, we're going to use here to accommodate students and guests at our demonstration site. And uh, it's an international competition, it's open to anyone. Um, and the criteria are, are pretty simple, we're looking for something that's low impact, so light on the ground, light on the environment. Um, something very small, um, it's got to be less than 184 square feet. And the organizing principle of the competition is that it will have a very small carbon footprint. So what we mean by that is that the emissions produced um, in the materials that are used and in the operation of the building are as low as possible, um, mainly to draw attention to energy efficiency in our buildings and also to, to draw attention to the impact that our building environment has on, on the climate. The competition is open until the end of March and then we'll have a two-week period where people will be able to view all the submissions on our website and vote for the best design. We also have a jury that will be selecting top designs. So we hope to have a winning design picked by mid-April and then shortly thereafter, as soon as uh, the weather uh, cooperates, we'll, we will start building the, the winning cabin here on site. This will serve as accommodation for students and guests on site. Uh, we're, we're developing a training and demonstration center here that we're calling the Rural Innovation Campus. Um, it's a place for people to basically bring their good ideas into reality. So we've got about 600 acres of forest here and we have been practicing restoration forestry as well as pursuing innovative approaches to um, woodland management including the sale of carbon offsets. We also have several acres of certified organic farmland where we've been already demonstrating some innovative approaches to food production including um, some polycultures, which are basically just mixes of different uh, crops in, uh, on one area. And uh, yeah, and also energy solutions. All these cabins are off-grid, so we're demonstrating renewable energy here on site. Basically, any idea that um, someone has that might make a positive impact in the world and they just need a platform in order to bring it into reality, we hope to provide that space here. We have an opportunity here to build infrastructure on our site. Um, but we don't just want to build a, a cabin, we want to also push the envelope a little bit and start a conversation, get people thinking about the climate impact of the built environment um, and encourage innovation, encourage people to, to maybe consider new materials or new, new approaches to running a building um, that will reduce its overall impact. I believe the ordinary person should be thinking about this kind of thing for a few reasons. Um, one, climate change is, uh, is something that affects us all, maybe not all equally, maybe not all today, but it will affect us all. And we all need to pool our energy and resources um, in order to address this challenge. Um, so the building sector is responsible for about 30% of emissions globally. Um, it's such a big contributor that if we don't reduce that impact in our infrastructure, in how we build and heat our homes, um, we're going to lock ourselves into worst case scenario climate change. Now the second reason why it's so important to think about this in your personal life is because it makes sense from an efficiency and from a financial standpoint to have buildings that are efficient and cheap to operate. Uh, one of the special things about addressing the climate challenge in the built environment is that it offers an opportunity to reduce our emissions at low or no cost. So it's just like if you're building a new house, um, it's in your best interest to build it efficiently so that over the life of that building it doesn't consume much energy because it will be much cheaper to operate um, if, you, if you take those things into consideration at the beginning. This is where we practice what we preach, I guess, as an organization. Um, we, we believe in the environment, we believe in New Brunswick, we believe in, in, in innovative approaches um, to some of the biggest challenges that we face. And so this is both where we can demonstrate some of those solutions, but also provide the space for other people um, and the support network to, uh, to tackle these challenges as well. I think we definitely in the Maritimes have to play to our strengths. Um, when we think about buildings, for example, the advantage we have is that we, we're building things to withstand a very cold climate. Um, we're not the only place in the world that has to deal with cold climate. So solutions that are applicable here, if it works here in Canada, it'll be transferable to most of the cold climate um, countries around the world. That's just an example from the building sector. 
Um, the other assets that we have here in the Maritimes are, are, is our rich land base, our forests, our, our farms. And land is something that is always going to be of value. And the resources off those lands will always be of value, especially as the climate changes or as global markets change. And so we need to, I guess, assess our traditional models and figure out what aspects are worth continuing, and then also look at maybe where there's some, are, are some weaknesses which present opportunities to change and improve uh, how we manage our lands. Our organization believes that uh, we need to find a way to live on the land and make a living and prosper in the process. So we always try and look at ways where there's a strong economic component where people can you know, make a living, but also you know, the planet's full. We've got such a huge population and a limited land base, so how can we fit on that planet, uh, not destroy the environment, but actually restore it in the process? What we've found on, on this site at uh, the Rural Innovation Campus, it's a long history of, of people, the past owners, Clark Phillips and Susan Tyler, actually demonstrating how you could uh, farm, grow organic produce, work in the woods, restore a forest, um, but in the process still be able to make their livelihood, to generate an income and a living. And when you look at all these new technologies where they, they seem far away, you know, green building, oh, that's expensive, or renewable energy or solar energy, we're not going to get there, but the reality is it's coming. So how can we look at those not as, as challenges, but opportunities? When you look at New Brunswick, and there's a lot of talk about how we sort of reverse the trends of an aging demographic, uh, population decline, uh, sort of bleak economic outlooks. So all you hear about is the cuts that are coming and, and slow growth projections. I think the reality is we need to embrace what we have, which is our land, our forests, our traditional knowledge, our rural skills. And it may be great to say we want, you know, Moncton or St. John or Fredericton to be the next Silicon Valley, but we can learn a lot from from the valley. We can learn a lot of those principles around how technology scales, how new ideas work, how, how you can take an idea, innovate it, and then commercialize it or make it work for you and own that. But we can apply it to everything else we do. And I think New Brunswickers always look outside of the province, talk about what we don't have as the have-not province without celebrating the, the beauty of this place and all the rich natural assets that we have. We've actually built a rural innovation campus in, Tanz in Tanzania. And this, this rural innovation campus here is, is actually learning first from Tanzanians, which you don't think a lot um, about in terms of a development context, but we, we like to think about how can um, we work in another context like East Africa, but also how can we learn um, from, from what's worked there and vice versa. So I think the reality in a, in a globalized world is these are all shared challenges. It's not us just trying to figure out how to build better homes. It's not us just trying to figure out how we can provide renewable energy or, or provide food security. That's a global challenge. And I think the quicker it's shared and that we set up a way that we can share our best ideas and our best practices um, everywhere, the quicker we're gonna get to the type of solutions we need. This cabin competition, uh, kind of building clear the air is, is designed to sort of confront head on a lot of the questions about our uh, carbon dioxide emissions. Um, you know, in, in effect, us living on the planet and, and living the way we do at our current trajectory, we're going to have huge impacts. Um, and it might not be in our backyard. You know, how we live and work in, in the Maritimes might affect a place like Tanzania. It might affect, um, you know, the Canadian North. It, we can't actually take these, these problems and say, well, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's us, we made these decisions, now we're living with it. It's, it's everywhere. So this, this cabin competition is also, um, you know, we're gonna be getting ideas internationally. In the past competition, we had 57 submissions from 11 different countries. And it really is looking at how we can say, here's our challenge. We're here in New Brunswick, we're in the Acadian forest. Uh, this is something that we need to do for how we can live and work here, but we know it has global implications. We know it has impacts. So that's really the message that we're trying to get at. We can all work together collectively to solve these challenges because it is a collective problem.
So we're going to take a look at the Pneumatic Cabin. This is the winner of our last design competition and it was designed by a young architect in Toronto named Nathan Fisher. So let's head in and check it out. So this is it. Um, as you can see it's pretty cozy and uh, the, one of the criteria in the design competition was that it would be less than 184 square feet because what we're going for is a tiny shelter. Um, so uh, we've got this little vestibule on the outside. The interior space is probably around 160 square feet. Uh, lots of natural light, um, nice modern interior, and our little wood heater here to keep it nice and snug. So as you can see, this is uh, entirely clad in cedar shingles, the roof and the walls. Um, this is a great local material. And one of the most innovative things about this cabin actually is its portability. It's a mobile cabin, um, and as you can see, it's just on simple highway jacks as a foundation. It's got a heavy sill running the entire length of the building for highway jacks. So the concept is you can build it off site, bring it to your location, uh, put some patio stones down, adjust the jacks so that the building's level and you're good to go. Um, and then so that minimizes any impact on, on the building environment, which is important for us, especially in the forest here. And it also means that if we decide we want to move this cabin to a new location, we can come in, hook up our trailer, pick up and go. Cost is something that's really important to us as an environmental charity and also um, because we want our solutions to be transferable, so we want them to be accessible. So in our original competition, we set a uh, cap on material costs at $10,000 and this building actually came in just under $10,000 in materials. That makes this accessible to people. Um, I mean, obviously you have to add labor costs on top of that. We got around that mostly by um, working with friends and doing it ourselves, which is something that some people are able to do. But uh, this is such a small build that even if you had to hire it out, um, you're probably only going to take a couple weeks um, max to build it. This is kind of a proof of concept. So one of the things that we paid really close attention to was energy efficiency. And that's something that can be applied to any building at any scale. And really the bigger your building, the more important it gets because that affects how much the building costs to run over its lifetime. Um, so insulation, air sealing, um, and also we were really careful in terms of the materials we used. We used as much local material as possible. Um, virtually all the wood products in the building came from the Maritimes, came from mostly right in here in New Brunswick. If you are interested in submitting an idea to the contest and you'll want to check out the submissions because there is a People's Choice vote, check out their website, forestsinternational.org. The shortlist entries will be printed and on display in an exhibit in St. John's, so look for that because, like Jeff said, everyone should be thinking of this.